Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Payson, and I'm excited to be joined by the top eight, Mateo Gardner. Mateo, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. Seems like I just seen you. I was going to say, we've seen a lot of each other. You were kind enough to come on the show before the 247 Cincinnati fight when you were fighting at heavyweight. You got a submission win out there in Cincinnati, which is the first time 247 has been out there. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I got to interview in the cage, which was fantastic. Um, but you haven't had a chance to come on. But now you're going back to back in the sense that you fought out in Cincinnati and now you're going to be fighting uh, in Cannonsburg at the Meadows Casino, the Hollywood Casino at Meadows for 247 Fighting Championship. Gronenberg 18, their big double header. They have a grappling event and then an MMA fight you're taking a pro MMA fight, and it's not going to be heavyweight. It's going to be a 200-pound catch weight, so just under the 205. Um, and we'll talk about that. But first, if you could summarize, what, how did you think things went in Cincinnati? Kind of walk me through that. You ended up getting a <clears throat> neck crank submission finish in the third round against a guy who probably weighed about 250, 260. Um, it went... It went good. I wish I could have did more on the striking end. I mean, I did stick and move like I wanted to, but I just didn't do as much damage as I wanted to on the striking end. And like I said, I had to make those in, in cage adjustments, you know, and the weight could have been a big thing on that, you know, hitting them with shots. And, you know, he's used to being hit by bigger people and things like that. And so and just I have a wrestling background and just once I knew I could take him down, it was just over, you know, over after that. Like I knew I kind of had him. Um, but everything went good. I didn't feel good in the fight, but I knew I felt better than him. Mm -hmm. So that helped me get through the fight because I, I didn't feel good for me because I'm used to fighting lower at 85, but I knew I felt better than him. So that helped me get through the fight. And that's why after the fight, I told you I'm never doing this again, because I, even though it looked like a good performance, I still didn't feel good. Well, so. I, I really think that was that was wise. You know, in cage interviews are risky because you never know. Somebody's on adrenaline. You know, they, they say things. But I, I thought that was actually a really wise statement because, you, you know, at heavyweight, you feel different because you're carrying more weight yourself. Um, it was it was impressive to see you make those in fight adjustments i was sitting cage side and heard your corner actually saying for you not to take him down but i think like you said you had to shift the game plan doing you know because of what because of what happened now talk a little bit about uh even though this isn't 185 you're you're headed there 200 pounds is a lot better than heavyweight <laughs> so how do you think you're going to feel in there compared to heavyweight and, and and do you think you'll be able to have a higher uh higher rate higher movement rate because you'll be at lighter weight? Uh, I think I'll feel good because, honestly, after I rehydrate at 85, I'm back up to, like, 199, 200 mm -hmm. anyways, and sometimes even heavier, like 203, 204. So I think I'll feel normal like I will for a regular mm -hmm. 85 fight. Gotcha. Well, now that we're talking about the 200-pound fight, you've got it coming up against wow. this is obviously a pro catch weight. At two at two hundred between you and Frankie Festo, who's the local Pittsburgh fighter, you're coming in. Uh, it's gonna be really exciting because Braunberg eighteen has three pro fights, a pro title fight, um, and I mean it's, it's a lot. Plus, of course, all the amateurs. Plus, the night before, they're having some incredible grappling. So, why say yes to this fight? And and kind of what are your thoughts coming in against Frankie Festo? Um, I love the fight. You know, I'll fight anyone. I like, you know, that's just what it is. Um, and let's not forget, I'm back home, too. I'm from Greensburg, so uh -huh. why not Why not do it? You know what I mean? Like, he's not the only hometown guy. I know I train in Ohio and things like that, but I'm still – I'm going to have a crowd there, too. So I'm excited to fight back home and put on a show for my people, put on a show for you guys, and I love to compete, man. I just – I love to compete. That's just what it is. I love to compete. I have goals for myself, and the only way to get, reach these goals is to compete. So I have to compete. And Frankie Festa, he's a vet. He's been around a while, and I know he's he's ready and he's excited to get back in the cage. So I'm excited for the fight. 
Well, I'm I'm excited. I was already excited because I've I've seen you live, so I know you're a very exciting fighter. And I kind of assumed Frankie Festa was the hometown guy. It's even better to know you're also from the area. I know you train out at Demolition Fight Team in Ohio, but it's really more exciting, particularly in the close environment of the Meadows. Um, that's a really incredible fight venue. And when two fighters are hometown fighters, it, it it's even more exciting. Like like those are okay. those are fights we've done. Uh, 247 has probably done maybe four or more events. I could be wrong. Four more events at the Meadows and anybody yelling and screaming inside the event center is amplified. Plus when there's two fights, two fighters that are, um, you know, that are hometown guys, that's going to be really, really exciting. And you're a pro. So you're already towards the end of the event. Anyhow, very, very exciting. Um, for you, we had talked a lot last time you were on the show about your connection training partner to Dylan Budka. Obviously, he had just like the day before gotten uh, selected to UFC after winning an incredible fight for Dana White Contender Series. How's training been with him since he's now a, a member of the UFC? And you mentioned your own goals. So wh where do you see yourself being maybe in 2024 if you get off to a 3-0 and start and, and continue moving? Um. I'm just taking it one day at a time, one fight at a time right now. My end goal is definitely the UFC. Um, that's my goal. I want to be in the UFC. That's my dream. Uh, I want to be a world champion. I, I want to be considered one day one of the best ever. So that's what I'm working towards. And a lot of people don't understand in order to be considered one of the best ever, you have to get to the UFC. Not that these other promotions aren't good, but they're just – that's just how it is. You know, the UFC has been around the longest. They're the biggest promotion. And that is so you have to get there to be considered one of the best ever. So that's my goal. That's my long term goal right now. It's just keep beating whoever is in front of me one by one. Keep putting on special performances and keep training hard. Training's the same. Training is the exact same with Dylan. Same hard nosed guy. Good training partner. We have good goes in the gym. Good sparring rounds. Uh, I'm still learning a lot from him on the wrestling as um as usual. Uh yeah, but I'm jealous. Fight week, they're all going out to the PI and I have to be back here because I have to stay focused. I don't need to be traveling to Vegas on fight week. So I'm kind of jealous they're all going to the PI. But I know I'll get my chance to go there. And that's motivation right there. Like maybe I'm not maybe I don't deserve to go to the PI yet. Maybe I need to do more work, then I'll get to go. You know what I mean? So I'm ready. Well, that <laughs> that that self discipline goes a long way, right? Like a lot of times, particularly in professional sports, if you get everything you want right away, and there's no kind of hold yourself back, that self discipline is is really what makes those accomplishments more meaningful when you get there. I actually did see on Dylan Buckus' Facebook page that he had something going on with the PI. He was referring to it, so. Um, that that's actually cool to kind of see that. And obviously to be able to have your own goals, um, that that's really, really valuable for sure. So as far as prediction goes, do you want to make a prediction for this fight? Is it, it, it is there a mindset coming into this that you want a finish so far? You're two and oh, both with finishes as a pro. Do you want to keep that going or kind of what's your mindset yeah, coming into this fight? I'm predicting a finish. Um, that's what I'm always out there going for. But I don't expect nobody to just go out there and lay down. I always expect a war because I'm not just going to go out there and lay down. You know what I mean? So I'm not one of them people that sleep on fighters or anything like that. Everybody's dangerous. Any man that gets in that cage, you have to respect. So I'm predicting a finish. But I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a war and ended up being, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I'm not just going to go out there and lay down. So I wouldn't expect another man to do that. But I'm always going for the finish. So I'm predicting a finish. Don't know if it's going to be KO or submission, but that's what I'm going for. And that's what I'm, that's what I feel I'm going to do. That, that makes a lot of sense. That's why your fight is must, must watch. I'd say every fight on that card is, is camp blink must watch it. It's great matchmaking out of Jim Mooney and everybody at two, four, seven, they put on great yeah. cards. If you could, and this isn't about game planning or giving away anything to your opponent. If you could land like, sort of your dream skill like 
whether it be a jumping knee or a spinning back elbow, you know, something crazy. What would your spinning back of- kick to the face knockout first round? Okay, there you go. All right. All right. There it is. You could do you could do like the uh uh Barkley, I think was his last name, whose his leg was being held and he did a he got caught. And he, yep. He yeah, kick. yeah. So just do one. I of want Buckley. mine to be. I want mine to be clean though. Like, oh, oh like, okay. Like, well, like, 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 who was it? Who was it? Edwin Barboza. He has yeah. a nice one like that. Like that. Something like that. Yeah. Against Terry Ed- just, Edmund. Yeah. Yeah. They just go to. They just go to sleep. Like nothing else after that. Like you don't have to do anything else. You just walk off. <laughs> well, that's true. I I often say the spinning back kit can uh, take away just as much as it gives. A lot of times that could be an unwise move, but if it sets up right and all that, I asked the question that would be spectacular to see you in there like a ballerina spinning around with a with a head kick. We've seen we've seen a lot of crazy kicks out of Wonderboy Thompson. He made a lot of incredible kicks. Edwin Barbosa has made a lot of great kicks. Uh, so yeah, kicks are a lot of fun. I'd love to see that. Whatever happens, uh, Brawl in the Berg, is a barn book 18 is going to be really exciting. You mentioned, I guess, as part of our wrap up, you mentioned being excited to show off for your hometown crowd, being a local Pennsylvania guy. Um, who are you looking forward to being there? Is it, it, are there a couple people you really are excited to have, or is it more you're excited to have like a big crowd? Who are you excited to have there? Uh, I'm excited to have my sister there. She hasn't been at, uh, to one of my fights in a while. Um, and just, you know, everyone I haven't seen in a while, really, like, because people don't really get to see me fight too often because um, I'm always away. So just just being able to fight and not in front of just, you know, like, you know, my dad's going to come. I'm pretty sure everyone can hear him at every fight. Pretty sure you heard him. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so, you know, I love being able to hear my dad, though, out there. It motivates me. It gives me more drive and more and more energy. It makes me like that much more determined to win because I don't want to disappoint him, even though I know he's always going to be proud of me regardless, but really just, you know, like I got friends from high school coming that I haven't seen in almost 10 years. So that's going to be cool, but I have to worry about the fight though. So I don't, I'm trying not to think about that. I'll see them after the fight. The only thing that matters right now is getting the win. And my coach always told, my coach always told me I don't have to worry about being exciting because my style is just naturally exciting. So I know I'll put on a show. Yeah, yeah, that is very true of your coach. It's great that you're going to be able to fight in front of a hometown, a hometown crowd. But like you said, it's really about getting the win first and then being able to celebrate. I appreciate you jumping back on here. I can't wait to kind of see how this whole double card goes for people out there. Get the pay-per-view or the in-person tickets for Sprawl on the Berg 2, which is the night before, same location, a lot of great submission uh, submission only, no gi grappling. And then, of course, the event that Top Apes on is all uh, all MMA from novice amateur to advanced amateur to pro. Uh, 247fighting.com for tickets or get them directly from Mateo. I really appreciate you coming on. Like and subscribe to the channel. I hope to have Top Ape Mateo Gardner on a bunch more in your ride yes. to the UFC. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, also, I'm excited because... Daniel Walters is from Greensburg, too. So I know he's going to bring some people that I probably know. So that'll be even more exciting to have them there, too. So shout out to Daniel Walters. That's my boy. We've trained together a few times, and he's one of the amateurs coming up, and he's going to put on the show for sure. Well, definitely a shout out to Dan Walters. I hope to have him on the show before or after the fight. It's also really cool anytime you see the network of what training partners have, you know, different weight classes, different gyms, sometimes hometown, sometimes cross training in your case, yeah. being from the same hometown. It's, it's really a great community between the fighters. And I think sometimes people don't always get to see that. So best skills to you, best skills to Dan waters. And I do know there's a couple other kind of new gyms to the card demolition fight team has fought for two, four, seven before, but I know Jim Mooney always prides himself in bringing in, new gyms because with new gyms comes new fighters and best skills to everybody of course thanks so much for coming on Uh, you've been listening to luke basin with mateo gardner can't wait to see live in action back-to-back nights october 20th october 21st the hollywood casino at the meadows in cannonsburg pennsylvania thanks so much thank you i appreciate it you got it bud all right